All right, so here we are at the Blender Market website, and you can see that this has a five-star rating, and that's because it is versatile, very powerful. You're able to bake your normals, your ID, your uh, AOs, and your curvature, which is probably one of the most important things. It's very easy. You can add multiple layers, and then you can bake out, and this is done. <laughs> I went ahead and went through this tutorial uh, a while back when I first started PBR and yes you can make perfect glass in Eevee it's awesome so a lot of different things you can do uh, if you're familiar with layer systems like a, if you are familiar with substance painter this will be a big benefit to you all right so let's jump right in so I'm just gonna take the wonderful Suzanne we're gonna sub Suzanne I'm gonna do two you got a slower PC feel free to do less it doesn't matter just going to go ahead and apply that now I want to and I'm gonna take this and hide it I don't know that's always an eyesore for me I'm gonna take this into the sculpting tab so come over to the sculpting workspace with me for just a moment and what we'll do is we'll briefly go over something I covered in the previous tutorial and I am using version 3.4 alpha which just came out recently and they've they've done some updating so what I'll do is first extend my tool panel just a touch so I can have pretty much all of them right there I'm gonna grab my paintbrush and I'll smack the end panel press N to pull that up and I'm gonna go to tools so I'll just pick any color doesn't matter I'm gonna go with blue I like blue is my favorite color and what I'll do is switch down and I'll uh, collapse that so I got some room here and I'm gonna go to options now I already went over this you can check out my other tutorial um, it's cavity cavity inverted area normals and view normals so what we're gonna be working on is curvature maps and curvature maps ident they're almost identical to the cavity option so if I come in here and start painting you can see I'm painting over the eye and Maybe a little bit's getting in there because of how it reads it, but that's really just going in the curvature. So what we can do is give Suzanne a bruise. We give Suzanne a nice little bruised eye there. Um, so that's the curvature map, very simple. And if I was to invert this, you can see it automatically deselects that. Let me control Z that and go back and choose a different color. Go to something like a nice deep orange. And now if I paint that, you can see it's not painting over that curvature. It's the opposite. It's the inverted of that. And though I can go over some of the other areas, it never takes the curvature. And my point for doing this is that the rust and other things that we're going to be going over and the smart materials are going to pick this up as well with baked maps. So it's super important. So if you want to continue that, I mean, you can go ahead and... Um, make all these different colors if you want it'll just grab the mouth down here just give you some ideas of what you can do it'll just grab the inside of the ear over here and you can hit control F and bring your um, strength up or you can just bring it up up here and paint a little bit deeper color and this is masking and then I can bring the radius up here or I can just hit F I just tap F on the keyboard and then I can get a bigger radius and cover more area also real quick if you hit alt a that brings up the same menu so if you didn't know that there you go and I believe a as well brings up another mask menu all right so that is enough of that we beat up Suzanne pretty good like I said check out my other tutorial for that because it's gonna be pretty helpful all right, so back over here. Now, the first thing you have to do, once you've got that downloaded, obviously, you go into your edit, your preferences, and I don't think everybody knows this. That's why I'm taking the time. And you go to install under add-ons and just click install. Then you can go find it, probably in your download somewhere, right? And if you downloaded PBR to use it and use it and love it forever, it's gonna probably come in an RAR file, rare file. So you have to unzip that, but do not unzip the actual zip file. So when you go to install this, you can just click and add install. 
and then if you have your auto save on you'll see that if not it'll say save preferences then you can just hit the X so when you tap the end panel you can search all the way down to the bottom that's probably where it's gonna be and pull up the Logix PBR Painter Pro workspace and in and of itself it's just a end panel tab now what you gotta do first is control S and you can just save this as whatever you want I'll save it as untitled because I'm not even gonna really keep this click new pick shader and you'll see a bunch of options pop up number one what you could do is you can come up here and rename this to monkey one if you had a number of shaders in here this could be monkey one and now you've got your baking tab which is next and that's pretty important uh, if you don't bake first then whatever textures and things you put on there are not going to line up right because the options for the smart materials are requiring those maps now for size this is just like being in blender in the EV engine if you will and so you can bring this up as far as you want I'm just gonna stick with 1024 I'll leave the margin at 16 pixels and I will bring this down to 4 for the quality because the higher the quality this thing could bake and it could on a slower machine take all day um, generally on my 3060 NVIDIA it's taken about 35 seconds but I won't bore you with that so you can um, click the normals there are some options in here if you want You've got an ID map. If you know how to set that up, that's another tutorial by itself. You have your AO or your ambient occlusion, and you've got a few settings there, so we'll highlight that. And the most important one we're gonna be doing besides the normals will be curvature. And so you can select some different things here if you're familiar. If you're coming from, like I said, Substance Painter, this should be pretty easy. So just go ahead and bake, and you'll see a status bar down here as it goes. Here, my fans ramping up. I absolutely, I'm in love with this RTX. This thing is great. So I'll pause it. All right, so you can still hear my fans. It took about 22 seconds. Not too bad. So I'm gonna collapse the baking, and now what we can do is get into paint layers. You've got two main options here, which is a custom layer, or you can go to smart material layers. Both work um, interchangeably. So if I went and just clicked on a smart material, you can see I'm on my, my base, my base color. Then I've got metallic, and then I've got roughness, and then I have emission, and then I've got my alpha channel. I've got height, which is super important. When you add layers to that, you can add a, a huge amount of realism. It's those imperfections that absolutely sell. It sells your model. And then you've got the normals, you can add a layer to that, and then you've got a custom bleh, custom layer channel. So what I'll do, since I've already got a material here, is I'll call this base, and then I'll scroll on down all the way, and right here under this little green ball, you will see your smart material list. Uh, you've got steel, rust, a bunch of different things. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna choose the iron brushed, because what I wanna do with this is make it rusty and then kind of control those layers and I'm gonna jump over to the EV engine for this to show up now that looks kind of wonky doesn't look too good right but what you can do is go over to the UV settings drop that menu down and you've got your basic controls for location rotation scale sometimes you can move it sometimes you can't I'm gonna drop this from UV to box and what that'll do is it will read the map properly for this and I'll go ahead and shade this smooth as well now from here what I want to do is add a smart layer um, so I'm gonna click this again and I'll double click that and make uh, under paint layers I'm gonna make this name rust and this is under the base as well I'll go ahead and make this one box and then I'll come back down here and you can choose any one you want you can go to Rust um, Core, is that Core? Like Course. And then you go Smart Rust, Rusty Metal, Paint, Chipping Paint, all of those are pretty cool. I'll just go with the Smart Rust for now. And wait for that to jump on there. So that looks pretty good. 
and this works like a layer system would. So if you were to grab your base and click the arrow to move this up and shift it, which is something you can definitely do, you'll see that you don't even see that layer. So understand that the hierarchy here is just as important as when you add a modifier and you're stacking different things, like a subdivision surface needs to go in a certain place, otherwise it's not gonna show right. All right, so now to kind of mess around with the settings on the uh, actual rust, and you'll identify which one you're on even if you don't label them because you'll see the material right here. So you've got a bump map. You can kind of play around with that to get the results you're looking for. You got your AO, which is gonna make a pretty big difference. I can kind of minimize that. And then the curvature, which is the probably single most important one you'll work with. So you can completely cover this thing in rust, or you can have it at your desired preference. And then of course you can work on details and things like that to make it look almost like the metal is coming apart. It's oxidized, it doesn't look good, right? And you wanna make it look real. And then your surface grain, you can change that and it will kinda of go from the normals to the curvature as you can see. So if you get a mix in between there, it looks pretty good. Now, you do have some other features here that'll become more apparent later, like the blend feature. Uh, once you've added more layers, sometimes the seams are going to be visible, and when they're visible, you can blend and make those disappear, but that's not gonna work right now because we don't have that problem. So what you wanna do is go ahead and add a custom layer. So now what we'll do is come over here to custom layers. <coughs> now important to note is that if you were to go to your rust or any layer and you can click on metallic or roughness or anything else and you can choose to mess around with the, um, the opacity a little bit. Like especially on the metallic you were to come to the opacity setting and let me just zoom in so it's all so apparent what's happening and if you can see the um, texture detail and PBR is pretty nice so if I bring this all the way up or all the way down you can even go through each one of these channels and change different things I can change the height as you can see pretty cool you can mess around with the normals, the AOs, everything else, whatever you want. And some of these channels will have more effect than others. And you kind of got to feel out um, to create your, your mesh, uh, get your model where you want it. And one of the reasons I would take, say, my base from UV to box is because under UV, I don't have the blend option, right? So if I've got some funky stuff going on I'm kind of stuck with what I've got or you could choose you could choose all these different um, selections as well you go sphere or flat uh, whatever you want to achieve it that actually kind of works pretty good with flat but box is generally going to be the better option all right so now I'm going to add a custom layer so I'll just click custom layer and I'll name this one something like checker pattern and now I'll come down and I'm going to add a surface layer so click in the little white box here with a uh, little white circle is basically the material pop-up just like with the green circle and I can go over to the checker pattern and drop that on our Suzanne and I'll go from UV to box so it can read it properly and also it gives us that nice blend capability. That actually looks pretty cool. So one thing for sure though is that is overriding my other textures. So I'm gonna move this down under the rust and move the rust up. And now I've got my rust coming through. And so now if I was to go to my checker pattern, I can change the colors and make it look 
more metallic, if you will, or whatever, like it's some kind of painted model, right? Um, you can change these to blue, anything you want. The scale, uh, you can kind of bring that up as well. Just realize that may kind of um, botch the pattern up a little bit. And that actually isn't where I'm going to go. I'm going to leave it right there. You can tighten that up if you want and bring that in a little bit maybe. Try something like 10. And as you get more familiar with PBR, what you'll be able to do is kind of get in here and play with these settings to get rid of seams and things like that. You can achieve some different results. Um, pretty, pretty easy to work with so far. I hope I haven't lost anybody. Hit me up in the comments if I have, and I will take care of explaining it in another tutorial. And it looks pretty good, so you could render this out, do whatever you want. Uh, let's just say this was where you wanted it. What you can do now is you can come down and I'll just collapse all of these different parameters and everything. You can export your textures and then you can choose how you want those to look. Margin, everything that we were setting up already. You can choose your file path and then you can export the base, metallic, roughness, emission, opacity, and the normals. And then you can apply this if you're shifting this back and forth between different programs and not lose any of this. Because all that hard work, you don't want to waste it. Now, real quick, if you were to go back up to our base, and let's just say you didn't like what you have because you've changed your mind now, you can go from this to anything else that you want, and it does not does not hurt. So if I wanted to go to like a, um, let's see, Maybe bronze. It usually doesn't take too long. Then you can get the the look, whatever that's going to bring. So there's a lot to explore, and you can see, as you can see, excuse me, the detail is exceptionally high with PBR Painter. So it's very comparable with any of the other programs that you would use. And this is a uh, Blender add-on. Like I said, you're supporting the Blender market which is what we want to do because we want Blender to grow and be an industry standard at some point. And we've already got 3.3 as an LTS, so that's pretty cool, which means we got long-term support for that for a little while. Then if the rust layer, you don't like that, you can go in and change that as well. And we'll change this to rusty paint. And now the model takes on a completely different look. So from here, like I said, you can just change the color of everything and you can mess around with the painted area because it's got its own, it comes with its own base and then you can kind of make it look a little rustier. You can make it look more metallic just depending on how you want the light to hit it and play around with the roughness as well to get that to achieve it. And then you can mess with the bump map, make this thing look crazy or you can smooth it out and that detail right there that's what sold me <laughs> so anyways I really hope this helped everybody understand that there are some very powerful add-ons for blender so go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button for more great content I'm gonna keep it rolling you guys tell me what you want if there's some particular um, thing you're looking for and I am happy to get in there and make a tutorial for it as you can see that layer is still under there so you can combine all these layers if you wanted to and achieve some pretty interesting results. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.